So the narrative on Bitcoin has shifted from a means of payment to a store of value for some. It's not so much used as a currency as a, it is digital gold. Institutions and public companies are buying this thesis and we're seeing Bitcoin hit records as a result. What do you make of this institutional and corporate interest in Bitcoin underlined by Tesla's one and a half billion Bitcoin investment on Monday? Well, as you suggested, uh, Bitcoin and crypto is not a means of payment, it's not a currency, it's not a unit of account, it's not a scalable means of payment, it's not uh, a single numerator. Now people say it's an asset. But think of it, uh, what are assets? Assets like stocks, bonds and real estate give you income or give you some use, like a real estate. And therefore they have a reason they have a capital gain. Gold doesn't give you income, but has other uses, industrial, utility, in jewelry and therefore has also some value and it used to be used as a means of payment. In the case of Bitcoin, it doesn't have any income, it doesn't have any use, it doesn't have any utility. So what's the value of it based on what? Based on no intrinsic value and purely a speculative bubble. That's why I argue that Bitcoin, like all the other shit coins, are worth zero. Actually negative <laughs> given the <laughs> hogging of energy and their mental cost. If it was a carbon tax on crypto, the value of these assets will be negative. So what's the fundamental value? What's the use? What's the utility that justifies the capital gain? None is a speculative bubble that is based on pump and dump, spoofing, wash trading, and manipulation by Tether. There's a total scam. So for institutional investors saying we're going to invest into, into crypto doesn't make any sense. You have a failing company that had a flat stock market like MicroStrategy for a decade, and its head was a cock addict decided then to bet the entire house on Bitcoin. That's, that's irresponsible behavior. And there's not going to be any corporate head who's going to put his cash, as you pointed out clearly, into something that is so volatile. You put your cash in something that is stable. And for somebody like Elon Musk, who knows that there's a market impact to manipulate, first take an individual position to Bitcoin, pump the price up, and then say that Tesla has invested and Tesla doesn't make money yet, it's also irresponsible and it's market manipulation. The SEC should be looking to people that have a market impact that manipulate the price of assets. That's also criminal behavior. <laughs> criminal that, behavior. Okay. The SEC should be looking into that. <laughs> um, Come on, it's a, well, it, it's a totally, totally criminal enterprise. Tether is a criminal enterprise and a bunch of whales and insiders are manipulating the price of Bitcoin and other shit coins day in, day out. That's a fact. Do Dr. Rabini, uh, always a ray of sunshine, of course. But we, the, the question about Tether is this. We've known for a, a while now that it has been backed entirely by dollars. Um, it, it, it's something like 70 some odd percent. Uh, that that came out a while ago. There's there have been questions about its its backing for some time, for several years. Yet it's still trading on par with U.S. dollar. Uh, con conceivably, they have enough assets at least for a while to keep the peg going with with the dollar. Uh, so, how much of a real worry is it for crypto if you know if there's even a small run on on tether, if you will? Well, first of all, we don't know whether it's back seventy percent or not. Uh, the, the lawyers say 70%, but we have no idea. There hasn't been any, any absolute uh, independent audit of it. We also know they are really issuing literally at the exponential rate new tethers, literally. In the last year alone, something like 25 billion. In the last few weeks, a billion per week. So it looks like they're getting desperate. And it's a typical Ponzi scheme in which you're maintaining the value of something by issuing more of it and more of it and so on. We know how, that how different is that from fiat? a number of them. How, dif huh? how, di how different is that from what's going on right now with, with the money printing happening in Washington? Well, the money printing That's in Washington it. is happening at the rate that is much less than the one of the issuance of fiat by Tether and other shit coins, if you look at the chart of it. I mean, literally, the case of Tether is exponential, first of all. Secondly, central banks, if you know, they have assets that are matching their liabilities. For every dollar of currency or excess reserves that are in the central bank balance sheet, there is an asset. Foreign reserves or gold or treasury assets. So the idea that fiat currencies are not backed by anything is utterly false. If you look at the balance sheet of any central bank, there are assets and their liabilities. And actually, there is a positive network most of the time. Well, in the case of Tether, there is nothing backing it.
the idea that even 70% is not true. And we know that every fixed exchange rate that is based on not fully backing and not fully collateralized eventually collapses. The entire history, monetary history, is that every fixed exchange rate is not backed has collapsed. It's only a matter of time. And the trigger is going to be when the indictments of Tether and Bitfinex are going to occur. And it's only a matter of time this year because we know there are investigations occurring. Let's move to central bank digital currencies for a moment. We know that China is moving quite rapidly in this area. Do you think that the U.S. dollar will remain the world's reserve currency? Well, I think that the Chinese are going to go ahead. The Riks Bank is going to go ahead. The ECB is going to go ahead. And until now, the U.S. was behind the curve, but they realized that the Chinese have a plan to dominate the global financial system. It's their e-commerce, it's their own platform of private payment system, like Alipay and WeChat Pay, and that's going to be the ERMB. And it's only a matter of time we're going to phase out cash all over the world. And if the U.S. wants to maintain the role of the U.S. dollar as a major global reserve currency, they will have to move to an e-dollar. The problem with that is that people get excited in the crypto world when central banks are talking about a central bank digital currency. But the central bank digital currency, first of all, has nothing to do with blockchain. It's going to be private. It's going to be centralized. It's going to be permission. It's going to be based on a bunch of trusted authority verifying transaction. It has nothing to do with blockchain. It has nothing to do with crypto. And as a payment system, it's going to dominate not only crypto that has absolutely no payment services, but also any private form of payment system that is digital, from credit cards to uh, bank deposits to Alipay to WeChat Pay to Venmo to Square to PayPal and so on. Because it's going to be cheap, it's going to be instantaneous, it's going to be instantaneous clearing and settlement, and it's going to be a system that's going to dominate any form of private money. So if and when central bank currency are going to be introduced, the problem is going to be that any form of private digital payment system is going to be crowded out, starting with crypto that doesn't have any payment service in the first place. Dr. Rabini, so it sounds like you believe that the technology underlying Bitcoin at least is sound and that governments and central banks around the world will adopt it. And if that's the case, what happens to privacy? And you've also mentioned a something about negative rates, you know, becoming the norm. Tell us about that. First of all, I said the opposite on the technology. The central bank digital currencies will not be based on blockchain. They're going to be private, not public. They're going to be centralized, not decentralized. They're going to be permission, not permissionless. They're going to be based on a bunch of central banks and private banks who are trusted verifiers of the transaction rather than being trustless. So the technology is not going to be blockchain. It's not going to be crypto. That's my point. Secondly, the advantage of having a central bank digital currency is that right now, if there is a very severe economic recession, central banks cannot go very negative with the policy rates. That's why they do quantitative easing, they do credit easing, because if you go lower than say, 75 basis points, people are going to switch their excess reserves into cash that there's a nominal zero interest rate. So they are not going to pay the tax. However, if you phase out cash, then you have no option than keeping your money in the digital form. And then the negative policy rate in a severe recession or a depression can go to minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, whatever you want it to be. So if and when that happens, and if there is a recession is severe enough, central bank digital currencies are going to allow you to have much more easy monetary policy with much more negative policy rates. That's the direction we're going to go. Is there anything that could happen that would change your mind about Bitcoin? Uh, so far, no. As I said, it's not a unit of account. It's not a means of payment. It's not a single numeraire. It's not a stable store of value. I, I don't believe there's going to be, and, and with proof of work, you get five <laughs> transactions per second. And if it was to be adopted as a means of payment, you'll have deflation because the quantity of it is limited in the long run. If you want to create a digital currency that actually works as a means of payment, its growth has to be the growth of nominal GDP so that demand can be satisfied by supply that increases as much as nominal GDP, meaning inflation target plus the growth rate of the economy. Otherwise, you're going to get permanent deflation of every price and goods and services. So fundamentally flawed even from that point of view.